Hi everybody, this is Dr. Kat Lees from Central New Mexico Community College. We're starting here with a new topic under the cardiovascular system, which is the heart. I have created about 14 short videos on the heart, and here in video A we will focus on the location of the heart and the serous membranes of the heart. Our heart is about the size of our fist and it weighs around 300 milligrams. Now that's going to be a little bit more for the male, a little bit less for the female uh, because of size differences. If we look at the location of the heart and we start here with this diagram, it's easy to see that the posterior side of the heart faces the vertebrae. The anterior side of the heart is going to be sitting deep to the, the, the sternum and the rib cage. At the same time, when we see, or when we take a look at this image down here, we see that the heart is shifted somewhat to the left, so it doesn't sit dead center. It sits slightly to the left, and consequently, we find that our left lung is actually somewhat smaller than our right lung. There's actually a little notch in our left lung to make room for that heart. In order to even better describe the positioning of the heart, let's first go over a little bit of anatomy already. And that is if we look at the superior portion of the heart where all the blood vessels enter and leave, it looks somewhat flattened. And so therefore we call that portion of the heart the base. On the other hand, the pointy part of the heart right here, we call the apex. The base of the heart occurs at about the left at the, occurs about at the level of the third costal cartilage, but the apex is further down and it's um, going to point towards the fourth and fifth ribs, not just pointing posteriorly but also off to the left. Finally, it's also very important for you to notice that the heart sits just superior to the diaphragm which is this dome-shaped skeletal muscle right here. Like other organs in the ventral body cavity, we see that the heart has its own uh, cirrhosis, and we have specific names for the cirrhosis, as you learned about in AMP1. Remember, we have the so-called visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium. But, but let's review this real quick. So if we take a chunk out of the heart wall, then the muscle tissue that I'm pointing to right now, which of course is cardiac muscle tissue, we will refer to that layer as the myocardium. Now the myocardium is covered by a layer which you've learned to call the visceral layer of the heart or the visceral pericardium with visceral slightly misspelled here. There should be an S added. And um, we can also refer to it even more simply as the epicardium. Basically the serous layer that's directly on top, epi on top of the heart. And as you know then following the epicardium as we mo move more superficially we're going to have a little bit of space that's filled with serous fluid. We'll call that the pericardial cavity. And then superficial to that we have our parietal layer or the parietal pericardium. Now what you probably haven't been introduced to before yet is that superficial to that parietal layer we have a very tough, fibrous, relatively thick layer that we will refer to as the fibrous pericardium. These two outer layers, that is your fibrous pericardium and the parietal layer, form what is often referred to as the pericardial sac. And in a cadaver, that pericardial sac is quite substantial. It looks like this, this leathery sac that envelopes the heart. And it ensures that the heart is protected, of course, but also that the heart cannot overexpand. 
recall too that the purpose of the presence of serous fluid inside of the pericardial cavity ensures that the layers of the heart, the serous layers can just slide along one another as the heart is moving and of course the movement of the heart we call heart contractions. The cardiac muscle tissue in the myocardium is arranged in these spiral bundles in the various chambers that we're about to discuss and this, this, this spiral arrangement particularly in the inferior portion of the heart where we have the the ventricles that are responsible for pumping out the blood, uh, the spiral arrangement really allows for the heart to squeeze hard and then push that blood upward out of the heart. Essentially the blood, I'm sorry, the heart will start to squeeze from its apex and move upward with its contractions to then um, eject the blood out of the arteries that arise from the heart. Now we do not we do not we do not just have um, muscle cells that make up the myocardium. Primarily, we have muscle cells, but amidst these muscle cells, we have what we refer to as a fibrous skeleton, and that fibrous skeleton is just a bunch of connective tissue fibers, collagen fibers in particular, that of course anchor the muscle cells. Something has to anchor these muscle cells so they have something to work against, just like our skeletal muscles are anchored onto our bones. But the other important part is that these, these co connective tissue fibers also provide some insulation. And insulation from what? From electrical currents. Those collagen fibers will ensure that the electrical current, which as we will learn soon, starts here in this particular chamber of the heart called the right atrium. When that electrical current starts in that right atrium, that electrical current will be forced to take a very specific route throughout the heart because of these connective tissue fibers that provide insulation. It's analogous to the rubber around the electrical cords in your house that ensure that the current that is created is only going to pass through those cords to its destination, maybe your space heater, maybe your TV, whatever it might be, your computer, and is not going to go anywhere else. We also see that the fiber skeleton is going to create the um, the valves that we'll learn about soon and um, the origin of the blood vessels. Now, since I just explained how the heart tends to contract from the bottom upwards because of those spiral bundled uh, muscle cells arrangements, um, we can as, might as well take a look at the, the ventricles of the heart. So the heart has four chambers. We see up here the two upper chambers which will refer to the right and the left atria singular it would be atrium plural it would be atria and remember if these are anterior views of the heart which they are this would be the right atrium and this would be the left atrium well the inferior chambers are going to be referred to as ventricles. And so here we have our right ventricle and here we have our left ventricle. We will be able to distinguish them better on some of the other images. So what is the point of this particular image? On the left side we see the heart relaxed. On the right side we see it contracted. And you can see how those uh, spiral shaped muscle cells um, essentially do that. But the other important thing to recognize here is the size of the myocardium or the thickness of the myocardium in the right ventricle versus the left ventricle. Again, in the right ventricle versus the left ventricle. Notice that the left ventricle has a much, much thicker myocardium and that is because the left ventricle is going to eject the blood into the aorta, which we see here. 
and the aorta will literally have to take the blood to everywhere in the body except for the lungs. So that's quite a distance and therefore quite a bit of pressure needs to be generated in that left ventricle in order for the heart to succeed, su succeed in getting that blood distributed to the whole body except for the lungs. The right ventricle can get away with not being quite so thick and that is because it ejects its blood only in the pulmonary trunk, this artery right here, which then immediately splits into what we call the pulmonary arteries, the arteries that carry the blood to the lungs. The lungs are just right next door. There they are, of course, not drawn very uh, large, not large enough, but you get my point here. So here is our uh, left lung and here's our right lung. So that blood doesn't have to travel very far at all. And so therefore we can have differently sized myocardia in the different ventricles. This wraps up this video and we will focus on external anatomy of the heart in the next video.